In this video, we'll learn how we can create a double-sided shading network for a piece of geometry. Alright, great. So I have a very simple scene in front of me here. I have this little martini glass, and if we orbit around, you can see that it is in kind of this cube-like room shape. So, um, now, when looking at this glass, I want to point something out to you that's a little unique compared to the geometry we worked with in the previous video. That vase that we worked with in the previous video actually had thickness modeled into it. If you remember, that's why we were having problems getting our refraction rays through the vase. We had to increase the number of interactions that were allowed. Now this martini glass here, this does not have thickness modeled into it. You can see here that these gray polygons that we're looking at here, when we look down into the glass, what we're seeing here is the back sides of those polygons. So there's no thickness modeled in. So basically, the normals for all these polygons are pointed outward in the direction of these gray faces. These back ones are pointed in the opposite direction. So, uh, now, in a situation like this, we can actually create a shading network that will apply one material to the front sides of our faces, and another material completely to the back sides. Now, let me show you how this would work. I'm going to go ahead and kind of frame this up a little bit, and let's go ahead and jump into our hypershade here. Let me go ahead and open that up. I'll just clear off my work area to start off with. And we're going to go ahead and just start by making a couple of materials. Now, we've already gotten used to using the AI standard material, which is kind of the standard material for working inside of Arnold. I'm going to go ahead and continue using that. If you're using another rendering engine, then you might try uh, the whatever the Uber material for your render engine is, if your engine uses something like that. If it doesn't, you can try using some of the basic Maya surface materials, like a Blinn, or a Fong, or a Lambert. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of our AI standards. They're right there. I'll go ahead and remove the shading groups from our graph. We don't need those. And I'll go ahead and shrink these guys down so that they're very small and easy to work with here. Okay, great. Now, as far as the look of these shaders, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to quickly choose a couple of Arnold presets. Uh, if I select AI Standard 1 and come up to this Presets button, let's just choose maybe AI Gold. And you can see that sets our shader up appropriately. And if we come over here, let's just choose a different preset for this one. Maybe, oh, let's go AI Car Paint. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color here and shift that to kind of a red color. Maybe sort of like that. And I'll shift that specular color, which is kind of a light blue, to a similar red. Okay, great. So we've got two completely different materials that we've created here. Now we need to pipe both these materials into a node that can decide where it sh each one of these should be applied. This node that we're going to use is called a condition node. Now if we come over to our create bar, just understand that there are lots and lots of nodes inside here, and not all of them are responsible for shading a surface they do a number of different things. So if we came under Maya and looked in the utility nodes, you can see there's a big long list of them here. But if we scroll down, we should see that condition node. There it is. Go ahead and drop it in. And notice here that we have two inputs here. One is the color if true, and one is the color if false. So this is where we want to connect our two AI standard materials. So let's go ahead and connect our AI standard 2, our car paint, to the if true. I'll middle click and drag it, and wow, we just got a window that popped up that we haven't seen yet. Don't be scared by this. This is simply the connection editor, and it's been inside of Maya for a long time. This is a bit more advanced way to make connections between nodes, but really it's not that hard once you've used it a little bit. Um, let me pull this to the side so we can kind of look over here. On the left inside our connection editor, what we have here are the outputs for the shader, in this case that AI standard 2. 
On the right, what we have here are the inputs for the condition node. So in the case of the AI Standard 2, what we want to take is the out color. So we'll left click on that. And you can see that a lot of the inputs over here get grayed out. Those are ones that we cannot connect the out color to. So what we want to do is we want to connect that to the if true input. That's going to be right here. So let's go ahead and select that. And it's as simple as that. You can see as soon as we select both of the output and the input, we now get this little icon here indicating a connection's been made. We'll close that window and there's our connection. Simple enough, right? Let's go ahead and rinse and repeat with the AI standard one. I'll drag it over to the if false and we'll make the same connection. Only this time we'll take out color to the color if false. It's as simple as that. Now in reality, we didn't have to use the connection editor to make those connections. If we click on this little hamburger one time on both of these two shaders, you can actually see the outputs that we're connecting here, the out color. And we could just drag out a noodle like so and connect it to the appropriate input over here. I just wanted to show you another way that we can make connections here inside the hypershade. Okay. So we've got our two materials connected to our condition. Now our condition node needs to know what's going to determine if uh, we're applying the true material or the false material. So in order to determine this, what we need is a sampler info node. That's also a Maya utility node. And we can scroll down here until we find sampler info. There it is. We'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see it's a bigger node, so let's make some room for it here. We'll put it right over here for right now. Okay, great. So inside this node, you can see there are a number of things that uh, this node can be told to pass data on. Things like UV coordinates, ray direction, uh, tangents, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and we want to connect this particular sampler info node over here to the first term input. We'll go ahead and again middle click and drag. And again we're presented with the connection editor. Not a big deal. Let's come over here and find our first term. It's right there. But you can see I can't click on that. We need to know what we're connecting first. So let's bounce over to our outputs. And what we're going to connect is the flipped normal output. We're going to tell this node to say, if the normals are flipped for a face, then apply the true material. If they're not flipped, then apply the false material. Let's connect that up to first term, just like so, and close that out. And we've built our very simple shading network here. Now what we need to do at this point is take this condition and we need to create one more node here. We're going to create a surface material that has no shading properties to it. Why would we do that? Well, because the two AI standard materials that we're using, they both have shading properties. So uh, we want those to pass right through this material. This material really just serves the purpose of containing all of this shading network and applying it to a piece of geometry. So let's come over here to Maya Surfaces, and we're going to look for this surface shader, just like so. Now we can subtract the shading group. We don't really need that. But what we do want to do is we want to connect this condition node to the out color right here. So if we were to middle click and drag that over just like so, you can see the out color of the condition node gets connected to the out color of the surface shader. And we can give this some kind of a name, maybe like double sided. There we go. Let's go ahead and apply this to our geometry. We'll bounce back over into our Maya scene. I'll select my geometry and right click down to existing materials and double sided. Now when I apply that at first inside the viewport it may not look like it's working. But as we know the viewport can't always be trusted. So let's render this out. We'll just jump up to the Arnold render view. And there we go. Clearly you can see that we're applying two different materials to this same piece of geometry. So the, the sides of the geometry with a flipped normal is getting that gold material, while the sides that do not have flipped normals, well, they're getting that car paint material.
This is kind of a unique situation. Most of the pieces of geometry I work with are typically closed or I only need a single material on them. But for pieces of geometry that aren't closed off, you do have the ability to use two different surface materials for both sides of the geometry. All right, great. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next and final video and we'll learn how we can create volumetric shaders.